Oh. You can't start us this small. Well, unless these are like nightmare puzzles, but even then... Well, this is all twos and threes. Oh, wait, nine, you can go more. There's a five, two, three. Okay, we're still counting up. That's a good sign. Yeah, good, because I just messed up for a second. Gosh, this middle looked symmetrical, but it's not at all. It's almost like you can't trust symmetry in a puzzle. I was just saying. I thought it might be for a second, but I was like, mm, I don't know. Last time we were talking about games we'd played lately and just stuff like that because that's an easy topic to go back to. And I've forgotten this. I forgot to mention that I uh, the whole reason I like started playing a bunch of small things in my library was because uh, I played uh, Axiom Verge for the first time. Oh, okay. How did yeah. what what did you think of Axiom Verge? Have you played it? I have not, but I have seen it played played extensively. Okay. Um. I thought it was pretty good overall. So for some reason I went into it with the mindset that people dislike it for some reason. And I don't know. Overall it was it was pretty good. There were it's rough in places, but not bad. I think it's got a really cool suite of movement upgrades. Um, because of its its oh. I thought there was gonna be more in the middle. But it's got a really cool suite of movement upgrades because it's very, um, like, alien and computer and glitch themed. So instead of, like, instead of a double jump or something like that, you have, you can get, like, a teleport. Or instead of morph ball, you get, that's not, are you just counting? Yes. Are those temporary? Okay, thank you. Instead of like morph ball to go into small spaces, you get a little, uh, a little remotely controlled drone that you fire it out and you follow it, or it, the camera follows the drone even through doors and stuff like that. So you can have these little uh, drone puzzles where you have to navigate it through dangerous areas. And so, overall, I liked the upgrades and things like that. The thing that I didn't like was that by the end of the game, or not even throughout the game, the combat is kinda not amazing. It doesn't really feel very much like like the smooth, more streamlined combat that you'll find in uh, like Super Metroid. And, uh... But it, uh, but it unfortunately places, like, a heavy emphasis on the combat. Yeah, that was... Basically, by the end of it, there's a lot of enemies. Then the, it feels like you can't really avoid taking damage in a lot of situations. But you also have enough health that you can kind of just sit there and tank. That's how the final boss felt for me, was I just like, I don't know how to avoid any of this damage, so I'm just not going to bother because I can get a ton of, of uh, health drops off of it. Yeah, that was the impression that I got from a lot of the footage that I watched of it, was just that it's... There's a really heavy emphasis on combat, and... From what I... Which would be fine, but... Yeah, and then, well, for also from what I was seeing... It seems like most of your upgrades are weapons. There are, well, that's what it seems like. I thought so too, but it turns out that there was probably a good, like, 15 uh, up items and things like that, like upgrades or whatever. You do have a double jump, 
You get a, uh, this is a cool item that I thought was, or no, not double jump, you get a, a high jump. But a cool item I found was, um, in, you get a, instead of like a various suit or whatever, you get a, 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 a um, it's, it's like a lab coat, but it allows you to teleport through walls, like one tile wide walls. You just double tap against it and you'll like phase through the wall. So all these pillars or whatever that you've seen up to that point, suddenly you can kind of phase through them, which is it's neat. It's a, it's a bit different. And as you go, you start getting upgrades to it so that you can go through like bigger walls or you get a teleport, uh, like an actual teleport from your dude that you can activate in like any direction. So that ends up working out. But once I got that final uh, ability to kind of teleport in any direction, even in midair, is when I started feeling problems with like the, the level design. Because the rooms, because what it does is it allows you to also extend your jump distance and like in upwards directions and uh, uh, like uh, horizontal directions. Mm -hmm. And I found that the game seemed to continually make a lot of platforms by the end where you couldn't just jump normally, you had to use the teleport jump or the uh, you get an upgrade that allows you to switch positions with your remote drone. So you'd fire it out, you move the drone to where you want, and you teleport. And it, it felt like by the end the game was really... it had stopped giving you just simple platforms to go up, to jump up and instead expected you to kinda use the drone or the teleport to get up even the most simple of, of, of jumps in a room. Ah, the, 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 the double jump problem, essentially, when eventually you're, it stops being a double jump and it's just the jump. Yeah, but that's not even that bad because, I mean, double jump is, is fine. At least it doesn't take that long. You just push jump again. But Right, but I mean like that, the, but the that's, teleport, that's yeah, the no, no, design. But it's, yeah, it is. I suppose so. I don't take issue with that as much, though, because double jump is so natural. But the, the teleport is done by double tapping the direction you want on the D-pad. So doing that in midair is not always easy, especially if you need to do like a, a, a midair diagonal upwards. And granted, there's not that many, much reason for you to have to do some of that because you can use the remote drone. But still, it's like, this is just a basic jump in the room. Why do I need to... Why do I need this? Why do I need to use it? It wouldn't hurt to just put a another platform, because your high jump is not that high. It's like two tiles extra that you get. I don't know. It was mostly smaller gripes with the game that I that I found myself with. Overall, the, the level design was pretty cool. The world design, it's it's super alien. It feels more alien than anything Metroid has cooked up. Oh yeah, before. for sure. That I totally agree with. Um So I think it it's it's worth playing. It's worth giving a shot, but just there are there are some hiccups with it. Yeah, for, well honestly, like I think it looks great as far as like an alien landscape goes. I just think the game itself is act is just kind of ugly. Like I don't, I guess I don't... It, it is it is a um, it's one of those games that's going for kind of a a faux like faux eight bit aesthetic because I, I think most of the tiles in the game are drawn with only three colors and black, which it works, but. Maybe if you f you feel like when when you're looking at all of it, maybe you could have a little bit more detail or something. Another thing I noticed, and this is because I have like roots doing Super Metroid hacking, so I'm used to working with like Metroid style tile sets or whatever. I noticed that there was a lot of um. It seemed like every single area room was built out of um like 16 by 16 square tiles that don't blend into each other. 
Like, if you go back to, like, the original Metroid or something like that, and you look at the, uh, the tiles, most of them are all, like, they are 16 by 16 squares. You can tell that they are very much tiles, essentially. Mm -hmm. And, um... I think th this game, with with a select few exceptions for certain set pieces, most of the th most of the rooms are very tiled. Look, they look kind of artificial. At the same time, they look very alien. The backgrounds are actually really good, though. When you get outside to certain areas, or um, there's one place in particular, this underground place that I saw, it was very green, and it just had a huge like <laughs> parallax scrolling. Uh, background set piece going on and it looked really good. So there are parts of the game that look really good compared to other parts, but they are a little bit fewer and farther between. It's it's a uh, it comes down to personal personal opinion on it. Overall, I was okay. Oh no, that's not. Um, that's not. <sighs> I don't know how you do that but it gets me every time. Well, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm here to sabotage you at every opportunity. Like, how did you end up with all this? Because this is a five, which ends here, and oh, then okay. you can't, you ended you can't there. fit okay, the five okay. in here. Yep. Got it now. Uh, the other thing, the big thing was the weapons. Uh, that was another thing. There are 24 weapons in the game, and they are not created equal. Like, you get the second weapon you get is required to progress in the game, because you gotta use it to hit some switches, but beyond that, it's pretty damn useless. It's like, you fire a bullet, then you push the, the fire button again, and it explodes in like a hexagonal shot pattern. And that's, like, not useful, because you want to just be firing a lot of bullets. That's plausible. Oh no, it's not. No, well, th that's because you keep doing the thing. I don't know what you're doing. You're doing the thing. Uh, we so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep talking. Yeah. Let you do. But yeah, I didn't find all the weapons. So maybe some of them are better than what I found. But I kind of had like a few mainstays. There's one you basically get a, like a plasma beam you can find pretty early on, and that's that was good. Um, there was a, there was a triple shot, but it didn't, it wasn't super useful because it's really short range triple shot. Um, but one of the cool things about the game was it did, there are some neat upgrades. There's, uh, upgrades to bigger, uh, size nodes they're called. They increase the size of your bullets. Okay. Um, there was range up bullets for anything that has range on it or has limited ranges like the triple shot, they'll go further. So there are ways to upgrade your your weapons, and if you have, like, not as useful ones, sometimes you can get use out of them once you uh, find some upgrades for it. So there are systems in place, but overall I still felt like I was sticking with just a, a few of the more useful ones because, well, they served... They served their purpose in a variety of situations, instead of just, like, a few. Fair. Fair. Overall, Fair. Overall, it's pretty good. Like I said, the only, As I said, the only I got the impression from people that it wasn't so great, but it's fine. Yeah, they like said, the only Metroidvania that I've recently played that I can is uh, Iconoclast, and that's kind of its own weird thing. Yeah, we started, we talked a little bit about it last time, though we didn't get into details, or we didn't get into spoilers, because it was pretty recent. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't like... It's not bad, but... But I don't know. I don't know if I truly liked it. 
One that I am liking a lot, though, is uh, I'm playing Time Spinner right now because I backed it years ago and it came out and I had an early backer, or I had a, I guess, the key to get it early because I backed at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a lot of fun. If you want a Symphony of the Night style game, this is it. Like, this is so Symphony of the Night. It's maybe a bit close, maybe a bit too close in how close it is to Symphony of the Night at times, but Symphony of the Night is super good, so... It's actually a bit more like uh, Order of Ecclesia, I'd say. Okay. I See, I like... Order of Ecclesia was always my favorite anyway, so... The reason it's more like Order of Ecclesia, you have, um... You fight with orbs. It uh, Some of them use, like, your magic meter to attack. Not all of them, though. But, so you fight with orbs and you can mix and match two of them. They don't have, like, different buttons. Like, you know, Order of Ecclesia had, like, Y and X to control the different ones that you're using. Mm -hmm. But, so they're all on, like, the same... Uh, button, so it just alternates whatever two you, you equip. But so you have two different types of orbs that you can equip at any given time. So you you can mix and match and find a combo you like. They actually level up over time, the orbs. So you if you use them enough, uh, if you find one you like, it'll get stronger as you use it more. That's nifty, but it also feels like that would kind of like, that kind of behavior would, like, cement a playstyle rather than encourage exploration. Well, I, I've been exploring them just to see what it offers, but I I've, I thought about that too. However, it does the uh, the Castlevania type of Whoa, thing where on. there's a lot of... Why is this too marked? Oh, probably because I was going to fill this. Okay. Um, it does the Castlevania thing of enemies have different weaknesses. And, uh, they're... It seems like if you're attacking with something that they're not weak to, you'd have to just hit them a little bit longer. So it comes down to whatever you want. Plus, you get the ability pretty early on to uh, switch between three sets, just like Ecclesia does. So you can, you can basically have that experimentation by having other sets available to you at any given time. Right, but if you don't... But if they get stronger with use, then that just means you have three sets which aren't as strong. Sure. There aren't as many weapons, and you don't get like a, you don't get a, an orb from every enemy you can defeat, kind of like Ecclesia, so you, you have a more limited set of things. I don't know, I found it, I found switching up my uh, attacks to be pretty useful. But even if you don't want to use uh, those other orbs, what they do is there's also a, this jewelry system, and what the jewelry system ends up doing is, uh, you basically use an orb that you have, and it doesn't destroy it or anything like that, but you use an orb that you have to turn it into, like, uh, you know how you would have, like, up, uh, up attack spells with, uh, with, with your weapons in Ecclesia? Mm -hmm. You basically do that, like, you hold down the B button and it charges up some type of attack. So, like the blade orb, if you use it to make a to make a spell, you get a you get a colossal sword attack, and it, it's just a huge blade. Looks very much like Ecclesia's huge sword attack, honestly. Um, and so you can do you can do that. Also, there are rings in this jewelry system, so you can um. The rings are passive effects based off of the orbs that you've collected already. So if you have the fire orb, the ring that it creates is adds burning to your melee attacks or whatever. So even if you don't like the way that an orb attacks, you can still use it to create a piece of jewelry that might give you a benefit based off of what that orb does. So it's still it's still beneficial to actually like go and look for them, the ones that aren't, like, given to you as part of story or whatever. But it's been pretty fun so far. I'm, uh, I don't know how far into the game I'm, I am currently, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, I am finding that I have less patience for those kinds of games, especially mm -hmm. if they're not, like, heavily 
I don't want to, you know, like, they don't need to be, like, as linear as, like, you know, like, a Metroid fusion, per se, where it's, like, literally, hey, go here, do thing. You don't want to be, you don't want to be running around the whole map every time. Right, but, you know, I, I like that there are sometimes that games that have, like, they have a clear objective that's, like, hey, you know, this is the direction you want to head, but, like, they leave it. Like, Metroid Prime, I think, is one of the best ways to do it, where it's like, hey, you need to go here to do thing. How do you get to here? Well, that's on you, isn't it? Yeah. None of the ones that I've played lately have had that sort of hint system, but they've also had a lot of locked door. Well, Axiom Verge is kind of very open. Uh, but Time Spinner, at least, is not... It, it doesn't have, like, hints like... it. it there's talking and stuff. There is talking with NPCs, so they do like tell you where, like generally where you should try and go. But you aren't like locked into going there. You can kind of wander around and and figure out how you want to get to that place a little bit. There have only been a few times where I'm like, where am I going now? But even if I am, I'm just like look at the map and you can see any door you haven't gone in. So. Exploration in the game has never really been a, that much of a problem. Mm -hmm. But it is very much more of a Castlevania Metroidvania than a, than a Metroid 1. Which is fine because I haven't had one of them. I honestly, I think I like it more than the Bloodstain demo. Just feels better. But yeah. Highly recommend that one. Uh, it's, admittedly, I like my platformers to be more of the here is the thing, do the thing, than here is the place, find out how to get to the place. So, yeah. like, things like, you know, like Celeste. I love Celeste. Celeste is fucking amazing. Like, mm -hmm. that's more of this my style of platformer. Yeah, that's much more of a like a Mario style. Well, obviously it's a it's a spike platformer, but it's a more you know more linear A to B. I feel like I need to get Celeste on uh, PC because I've seen people are starting to mod it. I don't know how I would feel about that. They're just looking for like make like more levels, more level packs. Not Again, like... though, I don't know how I feel about that because the originals levels are so tightly designed. Oh sure. I mean, I don't know if they'll they'll turn out to be good or not, but I'm just interested. Not here. Down one. There it is. Sure is a hermit crab. He's very startled. 